and it was just like the roar and it was just amazing feeling like you'll never get that back the game's changed so much now that i wouldn't have lasted longer than it anyway one two three action <laughs> <laughs> You, it's easy for them to that edit when you do so, that. Oh, I usually do it myself. Oh, no. And I'm so glad that you no, did it. No, it syncs everything up because I edit all my shit. And it's horrible. so good. It's so good to have someone else that does this. All right, party. welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> We're here today with Tom Prime Train Butch. If you aren't using Prime t- prime Time Subs, then are you really prime? No, you're not because it helps you actually stay super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually cannot confirm that it will make you better looking, but I'll try. What's up, cousins? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Prime Potty. I am so excited to have, I'm going to read out a few nicknames here. No Neck, Mitch, <laughs> Robbo, Mad Dog, Shark Eyes, Rob Vlogs on the podcast today with me. How are you, my friend? You got that straight off um, Wikipedia, haven't you? <laughs> it was actually another one. There was The also- No Neck one's from... That's from the, yeah. what's it called, Wikipedia. I know that one. Shark Eyes 2, that's definitely on there. The, How do yeah. you edit that? I want to take that off. All, <laughs> you can actually edit them yourself, I'm pretty sure. Can you just <laughs> no get the neck. angle? <laughs> nah, no, cause no. I, cause I, I got that because I run like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like I'm running, trying harder, but it's just my thing. I think you just got like shrugged shot. I, does it make you feel a bit tougher on the field? Oh, uh, well, you throw your body around, you look like a mad dog. But <laughs> no, nah, my old house one time had a crack at me. He's like, stop. Are they swearing on this podcast? Yeah, fuck stop, no. Stop fucking acting like you're running hard. I'm like, mate, that's just what I do when I'm fatigued. <laughs> like, you meant to relax your shoulders when you run, like breathe through your nose and that. Yeah. I'm just like, <gasps> do, you, <laughs> do you get like uh, a little bit of soreness through your no, through your traps? I got no neck, so why would I get sore? <laughs> <You got laughs> no muscles there. It's just a just a bone. Oh, mate. Uh, for the people out there that don't know you, can you give me a 15 to 30 second introduction to Mitch Robinson? Hey guys, I'm Mitch Robinson from Tasmania, currently 33 years of age. Mm-hmm. I played uh, football for the Colton Footy Club and Brisbane Lions, 247 games at AFL, 32 Brownlow votes, <laughs> uh, f- I think 4,000 disposals and 1,000 tackles. <laughs> Three kids and fiance, and yeah, I like to have fun. And a YouTube channel. Oh, a YouTube channel, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to like say I started all that stuff, because, but the, you know, you kind of get the influence from America and I was like loving yes. that. And I did do like a day in the life, probably like 2013, I reckon. Uh-huh. And the response was horrible. So <laughs> it, it took a while. Like my teammates at the blues were like into me hard. They would have. It's... Cause I was dancing and cooking and stuff like <laughs> real wanker types, like top situation. Yeah. And I copped it. So I was like, not doing that again. And then I think it was like when I got a bit more comfortable in 2021 or 2020, whatever it was. And, the, like the response was like way better, especially from like the public. Do you reckon that was a shift from you moving states yeah. from Melbourne to Brisbane? Yeah, straight up. Cause like the bubble here, they're very, very picky of like what's cool and what's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I got to Brizzy and, and I was kind of solidified in the team and I was playing well, I think I had like my best year in 2019. And then I was like, well, fuck it. I might as well just start like vlogging what I'm doing and going to training. Cause I got injured in my calf, um, like two weeks before the finals. And I was like, I'm just going to film like what the rehab's like. And then that blew up. And then I did like a preseason game against Bulldogs. I had like 200k views. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I wasn't monetized then. So I was flat ass. Oh, no. That, that would have been that... some bank. I would have been like, <laughs> let's do Let's go. This is my new job. Fuck <laughs> AFL. I'm quitting. Yeah. It's actually so um, hard because I had the same thing when I started and I was getting like 50k, 60k on my first like two game vlog. Not monetized. So yeah. zero dollars. You get nothing. And then you get exposure though. So you kind of like take mm. that. But uh, as you probably know, like, Going from the AFL system to out of the AFL system doing vlogs is like there's a massive drop off because people don't really give a shit. Like, yeah. To be honest, but like they're still kind of engaged and want to know what's going your supporters. But then, like to get on the homepage, you have to get like the first few minutes of whatever you're doing has to be pretty capturing. So, yeah, it's I'm figuring out a way how to like get that back. Um, like the commentating thing the other day was really good. They got yeah, some views. Um, well. and that like bit of an insight into that. So, I'm constantly trying to evolve and see what's next. But I think that um I think that we both found that during the footy season views are obviously going to yeah, be a lot higher up. and um last year was kind of my first year of doing the game day vlogs and and social media based around afl and it's very very seasonal content yeah, like yeah. you know <laughs> it's the off season so like <laughs> even like instagram posts and all that kind of stuff like the engagement drops right off because it's no one terrible. really gives a shit like yeah. they don't watch cricket or do Literally. whatever they do and um you just got to find a way to be captivating and 
and still be like genuine to what you do, not just go out and start doing like pranks or whatever it is. I don't know, but <laughs> just trying to just trying to like just views. not be yourself. Yeah, <laughs> just go and start like door stopping people. Like that's what I might do. Like start door stopping media journals. So see how they like good. it. I think people would love to see that. Take that back out. Yeah, that's gonna be my next thing. So. <laughs> Find where they live and follow up on them. <laughs> Come to their. Well, they do. Let's see how they feel. Yeah, Come to. Dude, their they think front. it's all. Oh, that's fine. Like that's their job. Well, that's now your job. That's <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd like it too much. And I think no that they might uh, they might figure out how shit it is for the AFL football Mate, that they like, do I'm, it to. You're just leaving the house, get in your car. It's happened to me a couple of times being doorstop and it's like, man, like <laughs> I don't mind like a bit of like airtime, so I didn't really care. Yeah. But like I was made sure I was dressed up and had like looked pretty sweet. <laughs> but in one of the cases I had a massive black eye and a broken socket, so it wasn't that cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably touching we'll that later. That. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> but no, yeah. No, everything's going well. We just moved back to Brisbane from D-Town. Um, played footy with you up there. We lost mm. that final, which is kind of uh, flattening, but... It was difficult. It was two that points. That monsoon weather was not it, eh? <laughs> it, is NT football one of the most difficult in terms of conditions you've yeah. ever played? To be honest, like, it's the hardest brand of footy that I've played because for starters, like, young, fast kids... Um, mm. Want to make a name for himself? Indigenous kids, Indigenous which is just kids, way more they're, athletic, they're than way more any talented. White kid out there. Oh, it's it's next <laughs> level sorry. up there. No, it's true. Like they they got some freaky talent up there, and like to be honest, I hopefully down the track they get a team so they can really get on the scene because yep. a lot of these kids go out to community and like then don't see the passion of trying to get drafted or whatever, and then they just don't go to training and do that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So they need a better um, program up there for that. Better and pathway. Yeah, I think um, this, they're on the right track now to get that going with Brent Renouf doing a bit of the talent management stuff up there. So. NTFL really need to lift the game in that department, but no, nah, it was the hardest competition I've played in in terms of like weather, the heat, humidity. Like I, f- I consider myself pretty fit and like gut running. You do one contest, a couple efforts, I'm legit just walking to the next one. Like I oh, fuck it, I'm you know I'm done with AFL, so I'm not gonna be trying to get picked back up or anything. So I'm just like nah, I've got no time for that. And you just can't breathe. It's one minute it's like 34 and 95 percent humidity. Next minute it's like pouring down rain to come and see you like this far away. But Good fun. It is. It's great fun. And it's probably the most fun I've ever had playing football. Mm. I don't know if you share the same kind of ideas as me, but, and going back to that kind of thing where you go to take the mark and it looks dry. It looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, you get a falcon. This ball <laughs> is so slippery and wet. Yeah. People do not understand no. how shit the conditions are. I'll, I'll leave about 20 touches out there, I reckon. Like the like the Adil Buckley almost touches type <laughs> shit. Like, I swear I get my hands. I'm like, I had 40 easy that game. I'm like, oh, hang on. No, I didn't actually pick that ball up. It just kind of fell out of my hands. Because you're actually around the ball a lot because it's so yeah. kind of, it's kind of messy a lot of the time yeah. because it's difficult. It's to, unpredictable play. It's just, yeah. You know what I mean? Running one way. Yeah. And it's Sometimes like turnover. You, yeah, because you're too far ahead of the ball because you think that's going to be clean possession. Yeah, yeah. But there's always like a drop mark or yeah. a drop like handball or something. So Straight up. It can be very, very difficult. Um, <laughs> the NT, your first game, yeah. we oh. played together. Uh, luckily, it was only half a game. Yeah, <laughs> did you go with the fitness? <laughs> Bruh. So just finished <laughs> AFL season. Um, we lost the prelim against Geelong and we got pumped actually. And the VFL, we lost against Melbourne Demons. And I was like, oh, fuck. Well, I'm just going to launch for a little bit and then went to America for about uh, two weeks and then had four weeks completely off just doing nothing, like no fitness, no weights, no like, oh, I feel shit, I'm going to go for a jog. None of that. <laughs> Didn't touch a footy or whatever. And then I was like, oh, you know, I might, well, might as well go up to Darwin now. Like I'm pretty bored in Brisbane. Um, everyone's kind of like getting into their pre-season tra- or off-season training, which is mm. horrendous. It's like the hardest thing to do. Like off season's is worse than pre-season because yeah. like the motivation factor there is like no one knows if I'm not joined to this session. You don't have to wear GPS or any of that kind of stuff. It's just like... It's, it's all about like, if they know that I know how I feel, if I'm going to do a session, then I'm just not going to do it because no one's going to find mm-hmm. out. But they find out in pre-season when you come back. <laughs> fat, like, shit. You come back <laughs> you know and you're I mean? like, big ass. Someone's going to find out if you're blown up a little <laughs> bit. But um, yeah, so I hadn't done anything for six weeks. And the first game, it was like a heat wave that weekend. <clears throat> I was actually speaking to you before the game. In the warm-up, I was cramping. <laughs> And you're like, because the warm-up was pretty vigorous. They were like, go on, like, a few sprints Wait, and stuff. You need you're to like, chill you're like, in the warm-up, man. 100%. You're like, Robert, just don't, no, nah, don't do that sprint. <laughs> I was like, I'm fucked already. And it's like, literally, we've got an hour to be play. <laughs> but yeah, the sum, thankfully, well, not thankfully, but thankfully someone got knocked out and <laughs> <laughs> the ambulance took like 30 minutes to get there. because We had to cancel the game. Apparently there's three, only three ambulances on duty that day. And we'll, so, we we're up, but the worst thing is we're up by 40 points mm. and they, they end up playing in the grand final across. Yeah, very good team. So, yeah, that was my first game. I was playing on um, um, Cam Ellis Yeoman too. So mm. we were kind of like talking to each other saying like, hey, I'm not running to that one. You don't run either. But yeah, <laughs> was, it was his tough. first game up there as well for the nah, season? Nah, he, he played there a couple, I think. 
But mm. he, you know what he's like. He's built like a brick shit he's house. He's, like, he's, not a, he's not a big runner. <laughs> now that was his uh, cross the bearer towards the end of his career. It's uh, it's it's pretty difficult going up there. I think for yourself as a inside mm. contested kamikaze type player. Yeah. And then there it's just outside That's run free is, yeah. uncontested. I don't think I laid a tackle a game. Like <laughs> some if someone fell into my arms, that's I'll claim that's it, it. But I wasn't chasing. I couldn't catch him, and um, it was yeah, it was a good time. Glad I did it. Got to play for the Barcelona a massive family club, really close to me with the Andersons and stuff there. And um, I'll definitely be back up next year. Mm, same um, as shout well, out to the Buffs. Yeah, I wish they're I could fantastic. pay. That'd be great. <laughs> We just play for love of the game, that, there, don't that, we? It's that's like, actually it. And to be honest, I found love for the game again. Yeah. I like a couple of the vlogs and stuff were around that. Like the grind of AFL, 14 years in it, same stuff every preseason. Like you're just flogging yourself to you spew every session. Um, and then all the reviews and meetings and the clinics and stuff that go with it. Like that was just draining. So going up there and just like picking and choosing when I want to train and just have some fun. And first game we had beers with them after the game. And I was like, that's fucking cool. That's footy. You haven't, I haven't done that since like under 16s. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which you weren't drinking beers. Obviously, Definitely you were having soft I was, I was getting paid fifty bucks a game, and I was putting it straight back over <laughs> the bar. Straight over the bar. What did I put a club shout out to you guys? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not playing with you this year. I kind of lied to you in the BNF last year, but I'll, I'll be back down there. Don't worry. Uh, so you're obviously a Tassie boy growing up. Yeah. Uh, we'll go through a little bit of your footy career. Are you ever going to return back down play some TSL footy? Maybe. Yeah, I reckon it's a pretty uh, shit show down there at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's fucking they're, cold as well. Yeah, it is like neck level cold. But the thing is, like, they're, they're trying really hard now to get an AFL team, like a 19th license. Yep. And I've, I don't think they're far off. They've got to build a pretty big stadium because the, the one at Blunston Arena, um, I don't think they that it doesn't hold too much mm. in regards to cap capacity. So they're looking at a brand new one. And it looks absolutely fucking amazing. Um, and if they build it, hopefully the AFL come. Um, I think it's like $300 million to build that thing. And it's like Gee, in a, in a good, good location though. And... You know, Tassie deserves it because the pathway at the moment, it's pretty bad. No one wants to go down there and play because there's no chance of getting drafted. Mm. The numbers of our drafts in the past 10 years have been literally like probably two max, two mm. to five, if mm. you get lucky. So everyone kind of leaves Tassie when you're 18 and goes, plays VFL, um, SNFL, Waffle and stuff like that. So hopefully if they get a team or close to, I'll go down there and try and help out in that regards. And I was speaking to Jack Rewalt last night about some things and he's massive on it too. And Matthew Richardson, those guys. So... If we can get something going on down there, it'd be great. But playing, I reckon I have to because I owe Lauderdale, uh, my local club, um, that opportunity to come down there and, and win a flag because they've been in like a shitload but just fallen short. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is always the most rewarding thing, returning to your mm. kind of hometown Straight club up. that you grew up with. Yeah. It's just like the feelings just all come back of yeah. just like, like you said before, having a beer after the game. Yeah. You end up playing with like, you know, the same people or the sons of the same yeah, people yeah, that you play yeah. with. It's yeah. like, oh, I played against you your dad. Home, what the fuck? <laughs> no, that is yeah. true. Like, I there played against your sons dad. Of old oh, yeah, and like, is. that's just like the coolest things ever. So, yeah. and that's something that I'm really lucky that I'm kind of getting towards this year in Wangaratta. Just like, that's where I grew up with country footy and Are you really into it. Yeah, Wangaratta this year. I thought year. you knew, sir. Well, well, like, I grew up. I'm just saying. Born like in a, Wang? Well, I was born in like Gladstone. But then I played country footy in WA, which was like three hours. Oh, you've been from, everywhere, haven't you? Yeah. You're three such a hours from like anywhere. And yeah. like that's kind of what Wang Grader is yeah, to me. It's yeah, just like yeah. the same feeling of like this country, yeah. humility, like yeah. it, family club, which I really, really love. And how they looking this year, though, Wangs? The Wang Rovers. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna say anything too much. The the Wang Maggies, who are our, like biggest competitor, who won it last yeah, year, they yeah. got done for um for be breaching the salary cap. Um, just recently, so, so they've been so dropped points. Herald Sun, look out this year because the Rovers have been paying some pretty hefty <laughs> money towards this guy to get That's down a, there. So. I don't know. Make sure you run an audit on there. Yeah, yeah, fuck. I'll be in the flag. My accountant will be looking at this because <laughs> I'm a massive Magpies fan. Well, Rovers, uh, uh, we haven't really been talked that much about this year to, to win it, but I saw um, it in the paper the other day for we, some local publication. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. All right. Think. Well, good luck. Well, hopefully, you do Thank well. You. No, I appreciate it. Um, Drafted in 2008, pick yep. number 40, went to the Blues. How was that for you? Probably the biggest steal in the draft, I reckon, that year. <laughs> <laughs> nah. you know, do you look at the 39 people that were picked before you? And yeah. Then, There's only I'm a couple. every single one of them. Oh, well, Nick Nat and Daniel Rich, Yaron. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, fairly some good players in the top 10 and stuff. But it was crazy because going to that draft, um, I was like, man, I'll be top 10 easy. I was an overage player because yeah. I went to Adelaide. I got kicked. Well, I'll be honest, I got kicked out of home, went to Adelaide and lived with my sister for a year. Wow. And then Darren Creswell, the ex-Sydney Swans player, he called me up and goes, come back and play a VFL um, for Tassie because we're in yep. the VFL. And I was like, yeah, no worries. And I was 18, turning 19 that year. 
and played really well in that year. I was like, I don't know what my averages were, but mm -hmm. as a young kid playing against AFL listed players and stuff and doing well, I was a mm -hmm. defender, third tall defender. Really? Just That's a, what you just grew a up skinny, playing? skinny, red hair, like blonde, really? dyed blonde. Man, I was, yeah. I was you dyed your hair blonde. Oh, man, I was blonde from like grade four all the way to draft day. No way. Yeah, man, not it. <laughs> For me, anyway, my complexion down there, like, it was like a moon tan. It was like <laughs> white, white. The Tassie, Tassie Ta the Tassie tan. Yeah, the Tassie tan. <laughs> so... Um, I was expected to go pretty high because I had a great carnival, under underhandings carnival and like won a lot of the medals and stuff there. Um, and then to be honest, I think my interviews at the draft camp was just not it. Like, yeah, wow. Because I talked to my dad. I was like, look, they're going to find out everything about me and like know like what I do off field, like a lot of fighting and stuff and drinking mm -hmm. with like the local boys in there. Like it's just not a great place to grow up mm -hmm. in certain areas. And I was like, no, I'll just be honest with them. So I was like telling them like, so they, they knew all the research and stuff and they asked me and I was like, just told them what it was. And then they were just taken back. Like, fuck, this guy's going to be a problem if he drafted. <laughs> like, that's what my feeling was. And I, leaving all the draft, like I talked to everyone, mm -hmm. leaving all that. I was like, man, like I'm, I'm probably not going to get drafted to be honest. So like I should just talk some shit yeah, or blame yeah. someone else, you know, but I had a lot, a lot of, in the end, I had a lot of good response and had a few texts before the draft from like Adelaide said, I will take you around no, the teens. Um, I didn't really know I was going to go to the Blues. Collingwood said, we'll take you in the 20s. And they end up taking a better player in Dane Beam. So I, you can't get cranky with that. He's a good player. Yeah, yeah. He was a great <laughs> player. Um, so there's a few clubs that like text you and talk to you and all that kind of stuff. And I was getting like lots of letters from um, uh, AFL clubs, which as a kid, like it's the best feeling ever. You think you're yeah, unstoppable. Yeah. And then I had all the media at my house draft night and I was like, man, I'm so cool. Like loving, like living it, like, like this set up with cameras set <laughs> and I didn't go top 20. I was like, oh no, this, oh, is, no. this is really, it's gonna be egg in this, this is going to be bad. Moment. Top 30, nothing. And then like, it was getting towards 40 and I was like, oh God, like this is going to be bad. And then got picked up by the blues and had a phone call from like Juddy and Murphy and wow. those guys. I was like, holy, I had the biggest night ever. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out to the town. That's crazy. Yeah, man. It was like having those guys call you. And I didn't expect to go there. And when you got drafted, you went to, like, we had probably had to pack our bags straight away and get there on the Monday because draft was on Friday or whatever. Straight into pre-season. Went down to community camp in Victoria somewhere with those guys, like meeting like Fev, Kate Simpson, Heath Scotland, Eddie Betts, that, all that kind of stuff. Like I'd never met Indigenous people till I went to, till I went to the Blues. Oh, wow. Didn't really? ever know anything about the culture or nothing. Crazy. Yeah. They don't teach it in school. Especially yeah, in course. Tassie. Tassie is really bad for that stuff. And um, going down the community camp, like being all those guys, um, I got drafted with Eddie Bess, Chris Yaron, um, and a couple of other blokes that didn't make it. But it was just, yeah, it was crazy times. That is crazy because, yeah. you know, a lot of people probably see you, well, a lot of people that might not know you might think that you actually are Indigenous because, you know. You did Google, well, like I've never Googled my name, but yeah. the first thing that pops up goes, it's Mitch Robinson Aboriginal. <laughs> Because like, well, you're such, you know, you're almost like an ambassador. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're an ally, I think is what yeah. um, people say. And, you know, you're up in NT. Yeah. Um, I believe your, your partner, partner yeah. is yeah. Indigenous as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting thing. But how do you reckon that those players that you were drafted with shaped your career? Yeah, well, I moved in with Eddie Betts my first year. So that's like when I got an understanding of the culture. And it was like very similar to like the group of people I grew up with. Like it's a close-knit family. You don't yeah. really deal with many other people. And and they just welcomed me into their crew. I, I, there was mm. like probably like Andrew Walker was in there as well. Um, there's a few other guys like that just took me under their wing, and I was just like I just fell in love with um, with with those guys. And f till this day, like me, Aaron Joseph, Eddie, Chris, Yaz, um, Dennis Armfield, we're still on a group chat just talking shit. Like, That's crazy. Twice of, like it's when I um, when I got in trouble at one stage with the Blues, like Malthouse slammed his hand on the table and broke his finger in in like having a crack at me. And he was like, how many fucking mates do you reckon you're going to have when you finish football? And I was like, oh, I'll have like 20, 30 or whatever. Like, oh, everyone, like everyone's on mate. Loves me. He's like, nah, you're going to have three or four max. Put yourself around those guys and like pull your head in type thing. Mm. And then he was actually right. Like I didn't get along with him at all. Didn't like, didn't like him. Yep. Um, he was just a hard ass and we didn't connect butterheads a lot. Um, but he was right. Like I've only got like three or four mates finishing AFL who I'd actually call like, oh, they're my mates. Is that something that worries you? How many people do you reckon would call you their mate? And yeah. how many do you reckon that'd be a different number? How many you would call your mate? Yeah. Like my, everyone's a mate. Like you're my mate. Yeah. Um, and you probably say a thing like, even like last year on the scene or maybe last year, I was like, this guy's a, like, to be honest, I'll be honest with you. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, he's not, gonna, he's not playing AFL. Like, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Like, little group chat with a couple of boys. Like, fuck, he, look at Prime's like talking through like contests and all that kind of stuff. Like, what is he doing? 
But that's like judging a book by its cover, big mm -hmm. time. Because I met you, mm. and they were like, "Oh, what's Prime like?" All these boys at Brisbane, like I was like, it, "Fucking good bloke." Like, <laughs> thanks, mate. Like, appreciate getting that. to know him, but like, yeah. you would have had that through all your. And it's like a diversity type thing. But, but I get like, like it's but you're doing so syndrome. well. People are like, it's more jealousy than anything. Yeah. Oh, but it's it's a hundred percent imposter syndrome for me because I'm like, who do who do I think I am? Yeah. Like I don't have a right to tell people or to educate people about AFL football. Yeah. I shouldn't have a, a right is what most people think because I don't play at the highest level. But um, but there's a lot of things that you learn through, you know, playing, you know, Waffle, Waffle Colts, yeah. VFL, that a lot of these 12, 13-year-olds have never heard about. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. something as simple as like maybe a tick lead or something yeah, that yeah. these people are never ever taught. And it's like, you know, if AFL players and had And they the weren't doing that to like ball yeah, magnets, eh? Like exactly. That's and if time. AFL players were more vocal and yeah. would say it. It's like everyone turned to me because I was the only person that was actually yeah. giving advice. Had the balls to do it as well. Because like, like no one in the AFL was actually giving advice. So it's like, who who do they have to listen to? How far out of comfort zone was it to start that stuff where you just gen like naturally just, oh, fuck it, I'll just do it? Yeah. Like it surely you would have been copping some hate. I was like, oh, what yeah. am I doing? Yeah, or but you're like, oh, I it's think, good hate. I think I'm similar to you. It's like, if you're hating on me, you're commenting, yeah. you're lit, you're you're engaging with yeah, my yeah. stuff. You're pushing my stuff out even more. So yeah, it's it kind of like, for you. it's good. it's going to hit the right people eventually. Yeah, yeah. And um and for me, it's like I would get all these messages of of support yeah. saying, you know, you've you've helped me, <laughs> you've helped me with my career, and you've helped me with footy, and I've loved that's your what, advice. That's what makes and it that's what makes it like yeah. I'm going to keep doing that. Well, you should see, like, even like <laughs> even us walking down the street before. <laughs> Yeah. Like some blokes <laughs> out, out of the car window and goes, what do you call me? You're a, you're a fucking, fucking dog, dog. robber. You're something like that. <laughs> like this bloke's in like a tradie van mm. out of his window, like shouting abuse at me. And I was like, that's that's cool as. Like, like we love that sort of stuff. you got to have thick skin, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did you find that with your stuff when you've, you know, obviously you said you first started in 2013, but did you find that you had a fair bit of backlash? Well, that's the first time, like the 2013, I was like, mm -hmm. ugh, I'm not doing that again. Because mm. like. like it the, took you seven years yeah, to recover the from the that. the public like. I had, I think that video had like 30k views. So back then that was pretty good for yeah. one video I uploaded. Mm -hmm. um, but the like the boys and stuff, I was so um, hell bent on like impressing them and like get like making sure they like me and like mm -hmm. I'm not that loser kid who's just going to be like focus, focusing on that kind of stuff. I had mm -hmm. to like, even though I was like a senior player, then I was playing in the best 22 every week at the Blues. Having that like something to do outside of footy for me, I was like, I thought that's cool. No one's doing it in Australia. Like it's only like NBA players doing like game day vlogs or mm -hmm. um, in a day in the life or whatever. But when so, once I got to Brizzy, as I said before, I was like, well, I'm one of the best players in the team at the time. And I was like, I can just kind of do what I want because it's such a young group. And then that's how it kind of rolled out. How do you think that the football landscape has changed in terms of when you were first drafted, let's say in 2008, there was a definite hierarchy mm. at the club. It, was, do you reckon that's changed yeah. so much in the last 10 years? I'd say because the Blues, like coming from Tassie, um, then going to Melbourne, like this is a this is a big city. This is a big smoke. Like we call it the mainland. Yeah. When we're, we're Tasmanians, we're like, oh, <laughs> fuck, we're going to the mainland? <laughs> like that's what it's like. The only time you'd go there is for like, I don't know, a funeral or something like that. You would yeah, never go wow. there because like you don't fly. You get the ferry from Hobart <laughs> or, or Lonnie all the way up here. Like you just don't come up here unless it's for footy type shit as well. Wow. So. Um, coming to the big smoke, there's so there was so many clicks at the blues and there was a hierarchy. Like Fev, Fev came in the room and everyone like he was just bigger than life, man. Like Yeah, wow. Watching him at training, him, Betsy, those blokes, like I was like, wow, we Juddy, like Juddy is like he's the coolest, nicest guy in the world. He's the hardest working. Like, you know that I was saying first there, last, last leave. leave. He was that guy. He was getting double tagged every weekend, both shoulders strapped, like copping it and still dominating. Like so learning from those guys was crazy. I wish I was more uh, mature as like a 19 year old, 20 year old and um, all that kind of stuff. But there's definitely clicks in the AFL back then. I don't think it is now because all the cultures are different. We, you know, you have like leading teams coming to clubs yeah. and like kind of like brush it all aside. And thankfully in Brizzy, I came as like a senior player and it was a real young group and my partner would have like an open door policy. So all the young kids that got drafted up to Brisbane would like just come through the house, have feeds Brilliant. and just like hang out with the kids and do all that kind of stuff. And there was no like, Oh, he's on the most money, so he can just talk shit about everyone. There was none of that. Like no one cared mm. on the cash you were on, whatever. It was just we'll catch up for food. Everyone like group text, WhatsApp group text, and everyone go out and do like drinks on the weekend. Like it was really good at the moment. Like back then, 
the only blokes I'd hang out with was like the Eddie Jeff Yaz, all those guys yeah. who just go to CQ, like 10 drink cards, <laughs> get blind on the weekend. Like, doesn't matter what time you finish the game, get home at 11 o'clock, we're going straight to CQ and then Eve <laughs> nightclub. Like, straight to Eve. Yeah, it, it was it was honestly the best <laughs> weekends. And I'm glad like, I, I experienced both worlds of like the Melbourne bubble and the Brisbane, like, the, on the back burner because it's rugby league, union, mm. and all that kind of shit. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a crazy journey that you had. Your debut, you kicked three goals. Yep. How was that? It's, it's obviously always the, the opening game of the season, the yeah. Richmond versus Carlton. It was a great game this year, but how did you find your debut? Yeah, that popped up on the my Instagram. They used a photo of me because um, I was saying like the round one attendances. Yeah. It was like 87,000. I think it was like ranked third for round one. So 87,500. No it's a good way to announce yourself to the footy my world, God. isn't it? So to be honest, I was playing really well in the practice matches. I kicked like four goals and I'm not a small forward. I was a defender. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, man, this shit's easy. <laughs> should have been like, doing I this my whole career. 16, bro. <laughs> Um, so there was, there was one game I played, like killed it. Um, it was a Satano Halpin punched and kicked oh. Cameron Cloak. No way. That was a practice match. And, I, and like that made all the headlines and stuff. And I was like, man. And I've kicked four. Man, I kicked four. <laughs> I was like a little skinny kid. Like it had like a little fine print down the bottom and said, no, he went all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, that, when I saw that and all that stuff happened, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like mm. AFL. Um, but debut. Mum and dad flew up, um, 87,000. It was the Ben Cousins v. Judd return. Oh, so they were teammates. And so then, big. yeah, so he obviously, um, Cuzzy fell off the rails and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <coughs> Got picked up at Richmond. And then that was his first game against us. And it was just like the roar and, and we flogged Richmond that game. And it was just amazing feeling. Like, I'll never get that back. Yeah. Only like maybe a final, like last year against Richmond, we beat him on the siren pretty much. Mm. Richmond. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Kick three goals. <laughs> I know all the stats and stuff because I'm mm. a big stat head. Mm -hmm. Like 16 touches, six tackles. Like fire. That's a pretty. Didn't ever get fucking day. rising star. Daniel Rich. Who got rising Richie? star? Richie. What did he have? 21 and like he won it that year. Hey, yeah, he, 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 was, he was a beast. He dominated. I remember his first yeah, season a, yeah. in AFL, and he's kind of just like stayed at that level his whole career. Mate, he's <laughs> one of the best players I've seen. Now he just racks it up in the back line because he just takes all the kick in. So yeah. you can play under yourself now, but. <laughs> No, I love Richie. He's a good fella. Um, but yeah, that debut was something that I always remember. And like um, Channel 7 or whatever, like followed me and mum and dad around. So I've got that footage, which is like something I'll show the kids one day. Mm. And yeah, it was heartwarming. That's for sure. Did got you, dropped four weeks later though. Did you really? Yeah. Did you shit once? <laughs> I wasn't too bad, but then I was like, oh, there's nothing happening. Why isn't it falling on my lap anymore? And, <laughs> but yeah, it was, the, the debut was good. We'll just talk about that. Got to keep working hard. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Oh, right? bloody hell. But towards the uh, Towards the end of your... Carlton career, yeah. um, you had a few run-ins with with a few uh, mishaps. Yeah, a few mishaps, which which we all kids happen. gonna be kids, you know what I mean? Kids gonna be. Kids. Everyone was like 21, 22. <laughs> but like, it's so difficult. You know, you're on a big pay packet. The whole world's at your feet. Mm. It's um, you know, it's a. Di I don't know how much kind of direction you had with other people helping you um, at that time in your life, but. Um, you had a fight in 2013 at the Big Day Out Festival. Yeah. Um, with a few of your mates. Can you talk me through what happened yeah, there? Yeah. So literally we just finished like a Saturday morning session, um, like training. I think it was just Always before. big sessions. Yeah. I think it was like it was the big session. Everyone was going out. It might have been Australia Day weekend. Um, and a few of my Tassie mates are up and they're rough as guts. And I was like, oh, should I go hang out with them? Oh, I don't know. I'm not like a big music festival guy. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. I'll go down. <laughs> Got on the green bag and I started drinking that and then went to the festival. And those blokes had like vodka, um, what are they called? Those little things you feel like. like what's it called when you like put a drink in a flask? The, yeah, yeah, they yeah. They had like these big flasks and they had a smashing straight vodka. Oh and I was like, man, this is a big day. And then like it all kind of happened like they were just, and the guy's like doing really well here now. Um, that, that, he, I think he's like a PT, so he's got that. He's got the, he's he's got the, he's got the certificate. He's, got, he, <laughs> certificate. he's certified. <laughs> um, he's a big boy now. Um, but yeah, like we kind of grew up together and would, he, that, him and his mates, which were my mates too, like just walking through the crowds, bumping blokes. They love, they love fighting. And I pulled him up. I was like, man, fuck, stop doing this because like I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> like, so I was gonna, it's like the old flip phone, take a photo type days. Yeah. And, um, and then he's like, oh, what, you want to fucking go? And I was like, yeah, let's, okay, fuck it. Let's go behind the tent over there and we'll have a fight. And then we're just walking towards it and he's turned around and whacked me and then it was on. Um, so my, some like the ones I was close with was like helping me, trying to get me off and then helping him. But I was just trying to lay into him. And then long story short, I got a call. So people were filming it all. I got a call from the club within like 10 minutes, I reckon. Fuck. So the, everyone would have gone straight to the publications. like that Herald Sun. Yeah, literally probably 10 minutes. And then they were like, don't you fucking go anywhere tonight. Like you go straight home now. And I only lived, this is in Flemington race course. I only lived up the road. Yeah. 
So I went back to the house and like I was texting him saying like, I'm, you know, let's meet up again and do it. Like I'm going to like have a crack at you and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> anyway, like we made truce in texts. I don't know why. And then they came around then um, we started drinking again and then we went out to like nightclubs and stuff and then it was just a messy night. And then I remember- Any more fights for the night or are you- No, nah, no, I don't reckon. I was probably over it by then. It's, uh, it, sometimes you just need to fight with your mate. Like sometimes you actually just need- Just time and place though. Like yeah. if we're going to do it, just not do it in front of you know, 50,000 people. But no, that was like a learning experience for me. And then end up getting like getting in trouble again. But as you said, like I didn't have anyone- Like that's- I didn't know any different. Like obviously now, if someone that was happening now, let's go the other way. And be yeah. like, fuck man, like I'm not going to fuck you here. What's wrong <laughs> You're with you? in the middle of everyone. Yeah, I'm just going home. So- Is that kind of the first mishap- in your career that yeah, you yeah, felt that was, was that kind was, of... That was the first one. But like in my head, I'm like, I've done nothing wrong. Um, and that's just kind of like the immature kid of me. Like you could have, I could have walked away. So I got like counseling for that stuff. Juddy was really good. He tried to um, mentor me um, for the next few years. And there's one, there's one story. He was into like all kind of random stuff. And so he took me to his house, his big like mansion in... Um, <laughs> big he, Juddy yeah, on the big, big jacket. <laughs> yeah. This, this place was huge. Him and Beck had this amazing house. Um, what's that big fashion strip? Um, do you know what's that big fashion strip um out there? Chapel Street, Chapel. near yeah, Chapel yeah, yeah. Street, like three, four story, like what a really nice. Took me into the house. We had like just catch up, talking about how life's going and stuff. And then went in. He goes, oh, I just want to do some meditation with you. Like this, I like, kind of like relax. Yeah, keep it in mind, I've got like chronic ADHD <laughs> at this time. So like, I can't sit still. Like even now, I'm like just just you going. Do, I, I'm I'm up and about now. Um, so I went into his room. He like literally put me in his closet. He goes, just stay here for like an hour, um, listen to this stuff. And I was like, fuck, I'm getting pranked here. This has to be like cameras <laughs> on the walls. And there has to be something going on. Like, So I did not meditate at all. I was just thinking like, when's this going when's to it gonna 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 finish? Like, And then came in and was like, oh, hey, are you done now? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, Juddy. I really appreciate that. Um, did you get much of it? Yeah, like oh, in touch with my breathing. I was just literally sitting there on my phone the whole time in, the cl- in his closet, mind you. <laughs> So Juddy tried and like I, I, I owe so much to Juddy because he was like so good for me um, mm. and just football experience too. He was awesome. But yeah, that's, that's one of those stories. That was that before your um, unfortunate 2014 <laughs> incident. That wasn't my is, fault. This now. Is, now this now, that is a wasn't big my story. Fault. So in 2014, you <laughs> fractured your eye socket. That it with, was bad. Uh, with should, a th- if I had the photo, like at some point on my computer. Is it that bad? Like balloon. Like that big, like I couldn't, I nearly lost vision in my eye. So you got into a fight on Sunday morning at 5 a.m. So obviously a Saturday, Saturday night, after Saturday night. Like after who knows? A, so you, you sound like a journal Saturday. at the moment. <laughs> after a big Saturday night. Early hours Jeffy, Sunday morning. <laughs> with Jeffy Garlett. And then you told them that it was a boxing injury. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically it was a boxing it injury. Was, but like, it just wasn't, wasn't at I training. Wasn't, I just wasn't specific. Uh, <laughs> I left a few details out. No, nah, so it was, um. Uh, Satana's birthday or Isaac's brother's birthday that night. And I was like, yeah, we'll go out. Like I, the worst thing was I just got suspended on the Friday for a shirt front of Lee Adams. <laughs> um, so I got two weeks for that. Yep. Um, and then I was, so I shouldn't have been out anyway. Cause if you, if you get like in trouble on field, you don't usually go out and show you your stay face. Off field. Yeah. So you should just be staying at home, chilling out. So I went out with the boys anyway. Then the, the big O'Halpins left and I was like, oh, timing wise, I kind of sucks. So that would have been pretty big help. Um, I li- Jeffy left the club with his ex. And at the time, there was some, some serious stuff going on there. And I, I literally walked out by myself because I was going home. Like, yeah, it's 2, 3 a.m. I'm just going mm. home now. Like, Emma's at home with the baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. Like, yeah, FYI. I was like, <laughs> three-month-old baby, a uh, little chancy boy. Um, and then looked to my left and Jeffy's getting dragged out of a taxi um, and then hit in the head with like a one of those road cones, like donked. Unconscious. By just a random. Just by like, there's like a group of s- seven or eight of them. Um, I think they called it like Apex Gang or something back then. Fuck. I don't know what it was. Just knocked him out clean. And I was like, ran over straight away and I like, got involved. And then I was shaping up. I hadn't seen this footage until like a year after the incident. So I didn't actually know what happened. I was like concussed that night. I didn't know. Shit. I didn't know if I started. I didn't know what was going on. Really? I, so you have no memory of the no, night? No, no. Wow. From, no. From that on. Like I was just, un, I was like just unconscious. But Fuck. I was like, I, I was awake on the ground getting like booted into and punched and stuff by like a group of guys. Fuck. But like when I, I was like, I ran. So from that, when it finished, people like cops came. I ran like all the way home to Essendon from the city. So I like getting my what? fitness in same time. <laughs> so that like that took a while. I opened the door and Emma's face was like, what the fuck has happened to you? And the, like my face was like just a balloon, as I said. Jeez. Broken bones in there. And like my optic nerve was like hanging on the back just. Holy so I got home. Shit. I was like, 
ice her straight away, got all that cream and the cream to make it go down. And I was like, what the fuck do I say? Because me and Jeffy, because Jeffy had some stuff going on off field that I didn't want to like tell the club about. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I can't, Jeffy's not answering his phone. And like, I found out later, Jeffy's in the hospital fuck. for like till uh, midweek or whatever it was. So I was like, I've just, just got to make something up. And then I was like, oh. I'm talking to my brother, I was like, Lee, can I use your name to say like we did a boxing? Because I was doing a lot of boxing at the time. I was yep. like, can I use you like saying that like, we were doing like a boxing session and you just like got me a good one or whatever. And he's yeah. like, yeah, no worries, bro. Like, I've got you. If they call me up, I'll say that. Anyway, long story short, I went to the club and the boys, like we had a little cafe at the, at the Icon Park there. And the boys like instantly were like, what the fuck <laughs> is wrong with your face? I was like, nah, it's all good. Like my eye was like red, bloodshot <laughs> and like big bruising. And I was like, nah, that's, nah, I was just boxing with my brother on the weekend. Like, oh, you wouldn't believe it, how it happened and stuff. He's like, what did you get boxing with the brick? <laughs> Run into a door. Something bad. Anyway, so like I told the club the the fake story and they like grew me better. Like, are you, are you sure about this? Because like they didn't know what was going on. Bark. They didn't know I was there. I was like, no, nah, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. No footage, nothing. No CCTV. Yeah. Which there was in the end. But then the, I was like, the club goes, the doctor looked at it and goes, fuck, you're going to hospital. Like you can't even stay out your eye at the moment. Like, let's go take you in. And then I got all the scans and like, yeah, it's pretty bad. Like I had to get like steroids and stuff for my face. And then, <laughs> and then the club called me up and I had like the um, welfare manager next to me, like sitting with me the whole day. Yep. And she's like, Mitch, just be honest with him. Like what actually happened? I was like, nah, boxing. Like saying, <laughs> I stuck fat to my story. Oh, I'm denied, like, you're not, denied, yeah, yeah, denied. you're not getting nothing out of me <laughs> until I hear from Jeffy. <laughs> And I didn't hear from him. And then like the next day, the media like started calling up the club going, oh, why isn't Robert training? Mm. He wasn't with the main group and stuff. And they're like, oh, he's just got an um, injury. He's going to get looked after. And then it just grew and grew. And then they just put like Jeffy's stuff come out. And then I was like, oh, shit. Like now the club's going to know that if Jeffy gets stitches in his head and he's in hospital, they're going to know that that's why I was there. So I came, came clean to him, told him, like, yeah, fuck, I was there. Sorry. <laughs> But I couldn't like tell him what actually happened because I didn't know. The full thing. I didn't actually know like how it started, if I was in the wrong or whatever. Fuck. So, so you were kind of under the impression that you and Jeff Gala got into a fight. No, actually... no, like no, no. I knew that I, I knew that um that he got in a hospital and knocked down stuff, but I didn't know how it all started. Okay. So like, the fight had, like, actually glimpses. wasn't between you and Jeff. No, at oh, all. no, no. I wasn't in any fights. Yeah. Like I just got king hit. Yeah. And then, like okay. laid into. Um, and but I you and Jeff were there on the same night. Yeah, Jeffy. Yeah, wow, Jeff, so yes. that's not what the report says. No, so, so that's journalism for you. It's good to hear from the journalism. That's good to hear from the source. That's yeah, why I come yeah. to you. That's why you get headlines, bro. So anyway, yeah, they the club they dogged me at the time. They put me in front of the media and in my face. You can you can YouTube and have a look. Face. You can put it up on whatever you're gonna put this on. Yeah, yeah. I'll get my and editor. the interviews there. And my face is just busted up, and I'm like, yeah, sorry guys. Like I was in a I was in a punch up. Um, you know, I always want to get respect back from the teammates and the club, and you know, all all that bullshit you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like looking back on it now, why would they chuck me in front? Because when I was talking about door stopping, they yeah. were at the front of my house for like the whole week and then the club's like, no, nah, we've got to put you out there. But if I was in the club now, I'd say, no, I'm not doing that. Mm. For starters, I wouldn't even ask one of my players to go out and talk when that, like I didn't know whose fault it was. And in the end, that, I ended up suing the guy for doing it um, to cover like expenses for like, I won't have good vision when I'm older, I've got glaucoma and stuff now. Really? So it's going to be like bad. So I pretty much sued the state and what? they just gave me like 20 grand. I was like, fuck. That that's, actually... Yeah, 20 grand. I was like, that's whack. <laughs> I was thinking like, I hear about su like suing cases all the time. I'm yep. thinking like hundreds of thousands and then nah, 20 grand. 20 grand. Fuck. And the guy got like- I expected some more, man. Yeah, I know. The guy got like a suspended sentence and stuff like that. So I actually haven't really spoken that openly about it, but it was just like when I was in the, in the hospital and they're like, yeah, you're going to have bad vision when you're old. I'm like, fuck, man, what's that mean? Oh, and no. the club- I actually love Colton, but the club, like... They were, fucking that, dog jar. Mate, like, they... So, during the week, like, so I couldn't play. I could get back for, like, the last round of the year. And they said, you can't play with this eye injury because if you get hit once, you're going to lose your eyesight. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, sweet ass. I'm going to do the... Get the goggles. So, it was funny. Nice like, <laughs> straight up. So, I went to um, Oakley, I think it was. And, yeah. like, we got these goggles, that, but, like, they... They fogged up too much when you exercise. Yeah. And I've still got them. I, I was unpacking a house and, like, in my memorabilia and shit. Should have brought them today. I, well, I didn't know you were talk about that, but... <laughs> um, yeah, so I had I had the goggles stuff, and then they, they made me like clean people's clothes and stuff for the club, like do all the washing, help oh, out with the like property the, steward, yeah, like do all like the, those things. And I was like, man, this is like there's only like three weeks left of the season, and I was, so I couldn't get back, and I was just doing all that shit, not training, and it's like felt like, man, this is the worst. I'm like, I know for a fact I'm gonna get cut in this year now, because they like if they really want to push me back, they could have. Mm -hmm. And then all went down. My manager, so manager was like, um, last round of the year, like, oh. I'm just going to give you the heads up. The club don't know I'm telling you this, but yeah, you're going to get cut. And I was Fuck. like, so I went into, I went into the meeting 
There's already like this, knowing. Yeah, already knowing. They, they didn't know that. Yep. So went in there. Oh, sorry, I put the prime there. Sorry, they, you they, moved, yeah, you wanna... they went. They went in. I would, they were all sitting around the table saying, like, you know, you had a great year. I think I played only ten games. I had like four suspensions during the year, so I missed a lot of footy. Um, but I was like, averaging some good averages, like twenty in a goal or whatever. Mm. I'm like, no, nah, we're changing our culture. We don't want um, you to be part of it going forward. We don't think it's a good fit anymore. And I was like. I didn't even get emotional because I knew I was already done. Yep. So if I if I got told that now, like when I finished up with Brisbane, I was like fucking, when I was talking about retirement with them, like that was like the hardest time ever. But this was yep. like, oh, I'm done. So whatever and they're saying to me now, I didn't even listen to it. I was like, whatever. All right. And you were only 22, 23? Yeah, 24, 24. 24. Yeah. So you're still and I was, I was quite killing, young. I was, I was like playing good footy for, for Blues, like mm. um, all things considering, like didn't play any VFL or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, then... Walked out, grabbed my stuff, and then saw a couple of boys on the way. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. They're like, like, no way. It's like, yeah, when I just went. But they already knew. Probably. They already knew. Yeah, I went and started drinking a lot of stuff, like pretty heavily. I was like, I told Emma, <clears throat> I got to get out of here. I'm going to Mexico. So I just got on a plane, went to Mexico with my best mate from Tassie, and then like I just said, fuck it. No, nah, I need, I need time to clear my head and like wow. see. And it was the best thing I ever did. I went over there and just cleared my mind. And then my manager was like talking to me. He's like, man, to be honest, no one's biting. Like everyone just thinks you like a bad boy and you just fuck up too much. And then Richmond, like I give a big, like always had a massive rivalry with Richmond because, you know, Colton and the stuff I said about Lynch and stuff in the media. Um, but they like, they offered me a one year contract of like rookie wages, like I think like 70 grand. Yeah. Wow. So like I was on like 550 at, at, uh, at, at Blues. the Blues. Yeah. Like they offered me Fucking the two year contract before I got in trouble. Yep. And then I was like, nah, I can't do that, man. Like last resort. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And I was really, really close with Greg Swan, who's the mm -hmm. CEO of, um, the Brisbane Lions and he was the CEO at a time at the Blues and he like kind of vouched for me like, oh, no, I know him, he's a good kid. You just got to like put some things around him, get him out of Melbourne. Get him out of Melbourne. Stuff. So I went and, toured, went and toured Richmond, did all that when I got back from Mexico and I was like, I just need to get out of Melbourne because I had my two brothers with me at the time and they were kind of like, not the great influence on mm -hmm. me uh, in Melbourne. I was like, I need to get out and just start fresh somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then um, Swanee, because he found out I was touring Richmond. That is like threw two years at me and then got me up there and that was it. All right. You moved to the Lions Yo. in 2015. It was a crazy good year for you. Yeah. Um, what do you think was the biggest, you know, you said like moving to Mexico and stuff. Did you know that you just needed to clean up your act and then you just have a much better season? Yeah. I just played with a chip on my shoulder. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it was. I wanted to prove um, Colton wrong for delisting me um, and no other clubs that wanted me. So I was like, "Fuck! I'm just gonna, like, pretty much turn to the most professional player I can." And and when you when you get when your job gets taken away from you, and no one comes to the table, and you're like, "Actually, I have no plan B. Yeah. I've got a small child. Like, I had no no income, whatever, coming in from anywhere." So I was like, during that three months that I wasn't signed up to a club, I was literally like, "What have, what have I what the am I doing next? Am I like, do? I could be a sparky because that's what my dad is. I can work with him and whatever." But I was only 24, and I had I thought like 10 more years in the system in front of me. So like that period of not being able to provide for my family was like the most embarrassing thing that's happened in my career by wow. far. Like, cause that's what, that's what I pride myself on always having <coughs> something for my kids and in the future. And thankfully now they're set up for life and everything. But, um, going to Brisbane, I was like, man, I'm just going to give it absolutely everything this year. Like, mm. and when I got there, I was kind of like a big name going there, but we had Dane Beams, Alan Christian, who like being grand, like grand final winners. Yep. So they're big names as well. And getting there, I was like, this is so much different to like Melbourne, Cohen, like, oh my God, I <laughs> open up like the Gabba sucks. Yeah. The, the gym and everything was terrible. It's terrible. Oh, the worst I've seen. And we just got a new facility at, at the Blues too. So that was yeah. kind of frustrating going up there. Um, we were training at like three or four different venues, like Kuparu, mm. Yoronga, just like everywhere. And I was like, what is this like B grade shit? <laughs> and then like- no wonder that they were well, That's why we were getting pumped. Yeah. Like, but- um, in the, in the end, we made that into our, like our culture, which is really cool. But yeah, early days, um, I wasn't playing overly well. I was like a forward, um, just solidified forward player, um, trying to get the touches. We went winning games or whatever. And then I think Bing, Binger went down, Dan Beams went down with a shoulder injury. And then I got, I was a sub one week and then he went down in that game and I came on, I had like 15 touches in like the second half. And then, um, Lepo was like, oh, we're just going to put you on ball now and then go do your thing. And then like just dominate. I was like tagging players every week, having like uh, high twenties and fifteen tackles or whatever. Like every it's second, crazy. like playing really good footy. Like I love tagging. It's the best thing for like me because 
I know what my job is. Yeah. Whereas like if you just play as a genuine on baller and you just you're one of the better players, like Lockie Neal, he knows his job. Mm-hmm. That's his game. Mine's like I just love physicalness and all that kind of um, attack on the ball and just hurting players and stuff. <laughs> so I was, it was it was simplified for me. Um, and then had a good year. I ended up winning the BNF with like three other blokes. So a little bit of tarnish on it, like sharing it with yeah. four guys. But that's it's just unheard of the way it happened. But there's a lot of controversy around the BNF saying like yeah. money wise and you won it with Beamer, Zorks, and Steph Martin. I yeah, believe, yeah, and they're all like the big breadwinners. So yeah. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I I won it. I should have won it by myself. But those guys really good players and they end up being champions of the game. So hundred percent. And then I came second there next next year, but the all, all behind that was just my professionalism. Like I never had that the blues. Didn't and have what was any, the biggest difference? Like just like what? recovery recovery, yeah. um, not drinking weekends and just like picking and choosing. Cause I was saw a counselor from the from the start when I got to Brizzy and we started talking around like the ADHD and what happens when you drink and not having a plan in place if you go out. Like don't be so impulsive when you go do it. Like Yeah. Oh, just finish the training session. I'm gonna go get blind. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, how are you yeah. getting home? What's the, like? What's gonna happen? Where are you going? Yeah. Who's gonna be out there with you? Like, bad influences, good influences. So mm. that was like the epitome of my career at Brisbane. Um, and there was some fuck ups along the way. I didn't make the media and all that kind of stuff, but um, mostly it was really good. Like in season, legit professional. Mm. Um, recovery, being a training on time, getting there early, doing extras, all that kind of stuff. Where I wasn't, I was just banking on like the best team with the Blues that I was with, like. And then just coasting off them, but mm. that was that was what changed for Brisbane. Yeah. So, what do you reckon was the biggest shift in your mindset from, or maybe just the lifestyle? Yeah. From Melbourne to Brisbane. Yeah, I'd say like just maturing, like growing like growing up from Tassie, like I said before, like you get fifty bucks a game and you just drink and go out and get in, get in blues <laughs> and stuff, have fun. Like that's just like yeah. a footy having fun. Go on to AFL. I took that with me. Yeah. And and there was no like massive. Um, we had some great leaders, but there wasn't any like. Oh, if you can get away with it, no one knows. Mm-hmm. So just go out, get drunk at home, and then just make sure you get to recovery at St Kilda in the morning. After no a one-hour one yeah. sleep or not no even one sleeping, no one just cares. rock up. Just don't get in trouble. And that's what – then end up getting in trouble a couple of times and then you get found out. So I just put myself out of that reach. So it's maturing as a person for sure. And obviously, like, the the what happened in that off-season when I didn't have a job, that's when I was like, fuck. Uh, like got, This is like what everyone does. I got my, my full real estate license, sports journalism degree, mm. um, small business course stuff. And I started doing accounting, but that wasn't up my alley at all. Mm. Then Just can, I can that one. <laughs> like accounting. That was not, I was like, man, I just want to do taxes. Because I wanted to be a player manager. Yep. And like help them grow as people. Because I can see like the warning signs, getting through the highs and lows of their career. And mm. I can like really help them. So that was my thing. And accounting just wasn't it. No, accounting's... Uh, it wasn't it, man. I was like... There's a lot oh, of just, sitting down... Bruh, it was it's terrible. ADHD. I reckon <laughs> I, it was terrible. I, I quit it after like, I reckon a month. I was like, nah, this is too much work. And I wasn't passionate about that. So yeah. I was like, I've got to be fucking all in on or nothing. hundred percent. What, uh, did you, did you enjoy your time at the lines from the start? Or did you actually, you know, when you say that you improved your professionalism, Yeah. did you enjoy it more or, d- or was it kind of like a bit more of a grind for you? Nah, it was, it was awesome for me. Cause I, I always say this, like, I'll, I'm so grateful for experiencing both worlds, like the Melbourne bubble, which is like fancy, popular, go out and like just, just notice whatever. everywhere. And like you, when you're a young kid, that's like, you froth on that. That's yeah. like cool as and if you're playing good footy and you're winning games, which we were like, there was no like stresses or nothing playing, playing footy, going out on the weekend back then when I was single, having fun and then getting to Brisbane, it's like, this place is dead. There's mm. no AFL at all. And like the glory days for the Lions was like, 01, 02, 03, when yep. they won the grand finals. And then from then on, they sucked. No one cared. No one cared about Brisbane. So like, we would always get reminded of the the legacy days and those, like all that, th- all that stuff. But no one would notice you, no one cared. Um, and it was just literally just rugby league and union. But that was the best thing too, because like we could just go to footy and switch off. Like yeah. do training, work your ass off, switch off and go home or go somewhere for a feed and not worry no about one, anyone ever yeah. noticing you, man. Like it's so cool. That's shifted obviously past four years because we got some um, good players at the club and winning finals and and being thereabouts, winning a lot of games, selling out the Gabba and all that shit. But yeah, early days was really good for me. Like I mm. couldn't have it, like silver linings galore. If I went to Richmond, I probably would have had fucking three premierships. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. That would have been nice. Oh, Do, you that. Do you regret that decision? Do you regret that decision? I wouldn't have lasted it in the league. Yeah. I wouldn't have lasted. Yeah. To be around those flows. Do you, you don't reckon you would have lasted no, they, anymore in Melbourne? They took someone from... No, nah, I wouldn't have lasted. I would have gone down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, they took someone from Geelong. I can't remember his name. But yeah, anyway, mm. I, w- I wouldn't have been there for it anyway, mm. I reckon. So Brisbane was like the only place that I was contemplating going and, and I'm glad I signed up there. So I owe everything to Greg Swan. 
and Justin Lepage for taking a chance to me. I remember when I called, <laughs> I called Lepper and I was like, um, the club goes, yeah, just give him a call and just have a talk to him about, cause he makes like kind of the final decision. List yeah. managers do, but he's like, if I don't want him here, he's not coming. Yep. He's like, oh yeah, so what, what kind of position do you want to play? What do you want to do when you're here? And I was like, man, I'll get on all fours. I don't give a fuck. I just <laughs> want to come. Like, this is what I said. I'll just play wherever, man. Like, <laughs> I'm ready to go. I can tag, play forward. I used to be a defender. Mm. I can, back then I was like playing knee forward, but I wasn't like, I'm not playing knee forward. I'm not playing knee forward. No, but you say whatever you want but to say get what on I have the to list. Say, you know what I mean? And then he was like, yeah, no worries. Come up then. That's I was crazy. like, that's what I was. I was like, Bob, we're fucking, we're going to Lions. <laughs> like, they suck, but it's like, but like, I looked at their list and everything, and I was like, man, because they finished like tenth uh, maybe, okay, and they beat a pretty. They only lost to Geelong, I think, down there at GMHBA by a point, yeah, in their last game. Oh, I think it was one of those years. I can't remember, but it's going the right. I was direction. like, man, they got a good young list. They're like a couple of good players up there. We'll be, we'll be, I reckon we might make finals, and mm. they'll be like, fuck you to everyone else. And, and it, it took a happen, while. Bro. It, it took, took a while, like, but we you sucked, did, bro. Yeah, we sucked. Like, you we did. Like, you eventually got there, and, yeah, and you know, I. I my dad was um, a big supporter of kind of Queensland football when we all moved up there. And um, I was going to a lot of games and I think I probably moved to Brisbane in 2018. Yeah, that was, that was the year before. It, yeah, it was the we, year. We, we lost we, like a lot of close games. We just started to we kind like of... We like did a reverse Collingwood. Mm, like people would, started to care. Yeah. Like, and people started to care what was happening in the footy world. Because yeah. like, you know, living in Brisbane, no one could give a fuck. Nah, no. <laughs> no. Footy. And people were like... Let's go to the Gabba and watch the Lions. I was like, Bruh. yeah, <laughs> let's when, we, go. when we played some games, we played some games and it was like, you'd run out and there'd be no one cheering for you when you run out. And then the oppo would come out like a Richmond Col and Collingwood oh. and the crowd goes crazy. Like, <laughs> where the fuck? Am I, man, am I in We're Brisbane? Or, or, yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> this isn't right. Like, what's going on here? And then like that year, 2018, as you said, you got up there, we we lost like six games by less than a goal. So I was like, oh, right. what well, Collingwood did last year, but they lost those but ones. They, 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 they won, them. but we lost. So we knew we were on the right track. Faze got there. Um, we had a new uh, GM mm -hmm. in David Noble who's really good, like set as strict as culture. And we got leading teams into like build our um, fucking, what fucking is it? leading teams. Yeah, I'm not a massive fan of it. It's a bit, uh, of, bit of wishy washy but stuff. Sometimes but it's you good need, for some players. Like, yeah. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the other people like who don't um, have the same personality, like it's really good if they inspire to be leaders yeah. and that kind of stuff. Like that helps them. At the moment, they've got 11 blokes in leadership group, which is like, what the Jeez. hell are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, Mate, that's crazy when you get to, to the point where you just like, everyone's a leader. <laughs> you know, like, put your hand up. Just Who wants to put your hand up? Every and single person's a leader. Yeah, so, no. Nah, and then like 2019, we made finals. I think we came from second last to finish second on the ladder. So that, that jump was crazy. And, and me and Huey really like rejuvenated what the ringer, ringer role was. Like mm -hmm. that's when people started taking notice of it, that what like they can do. Because we both averaged like 22 and a goal a game. And... Huey should have been all Australian. I definitely should have as well. But it was one of the, I think, I think it's every year, and I always talk about it. The all Australian, yeah, they never pick a winger. No, they never no, pick no. a half forward. You know, like I'm vocal as well. Oh, this. I hate it's, it, it's, dude. It's the best midfielders that get compl like just get oh, pushed just out. Just get put. Well, yeah, it's like because they got Petrarca no balls. Plays on half forward. The selectors have no balls, and yeah. I'll say that with pride. Like they just like oh, if they don't put. Like Dusty Martin, he he will always be in there. Mm -hmm. But um, who played on? They put someone on the wing, and I was like, that mother. He, he never played, played wing. Played ever. one percent out of I think all it was, the games. There was like a Zach Merritt or someone that someone played. Like that, yeah, had never played with wing. And, and like, Shuey's like, he's genuine winger. Plays like, like 60, 70 percent there. Um, reward them. Yeah. Um, Gaff Gaff plays there. Br yeah. Me and Brad Hill in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Like, uh, so they did like the the rankings. I was me, Hilly, uh, Shu for like that um wing the wing uh champion data thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Rankings. And none of us even made the squad. He's oh, so Huey dope. made the squad. That Huey was made the squad. Because you, yeah, were, you yeah. were Australian nominee 17, 18, I believe. No, nah, I didn't get anything. When you were, not, nah. when you were in the 40? No, nah, no, it wasn't in the squad. No. Nah. Really? Yeah, and that was like really good years. Far uh, out. 19, 20, uh, 19, 20 sucked because it was COVID. Like shortened games and they ruined all my stats. So fuck that. <laughs> 21 played well, but yeah. Yeah, the COVID years. We, we don't talk about that. Well, anyway, you, you, you kind of... Uh, I guess probably towards maybe the, the latter of your career, you started to create this YouTube channel yeah. that we talked about a little bit before, but I really want to get into it because it was one of the coolest ways that we got to see inside an AFL did you Did you, like, when you saw it, what were you thinking? Oh, this is was it cool? brilliant. Like, yeah. This is brilliant because growing up for me, and then that, this is a lot of stuff that I try to do with my content, is there was never, firstly, any AFL content. Yeah, yeah. And I never got to see what AFL players do day to day. Yeah. And, and, and I like wanted to know. Walls type yeah. Thing. And I wanted to know what I could do to get better firstly yeah, yeah, as yeah. a player. 
and um, what it's like to experience yeah. inside an AFL club. Like, that's what every kid wants. And, yeah. and I think that a lot, a lot of the time when you, you know, you might get drafted or you get to 23, 24, you forget how you were as a kid. Yeah. You forget how much you idolize these AFL players. I used yeah. to idolize the freaking fly-in players, you know, like they, <laughs> they don't even play AFL, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you used to idolize all these yeah, pe people yeah. as a kid. You didn't even really, but we always forget. So, mate, when you first did it, I thought it was the coolest thing. And, and I think that you really paved the way for people like Petrarca coming through now, yeah. doing a lot of TikToks. Um, you know, we see Cooper Hamilton as well from the Giants do a lot of sort of stuff on the media and, and yeah, I think you really paved the way. So what, yeah. what was kind of your, your mindset to start? Um, and yeah, why did you do it? Yeah. So I, it was, I think it was 20, I don't know if it was 2019 or 2020. I can't remember. One of those years, um, we we're about to make finals and I was thinking like, I just did my calf, uh, two weeks before, like I had a little niggle against Fremantle. And then I was like, fuck, like I might just, I've got to go, I just got recently got a GoPro for, I can't remember who gave it to me. <laughs> I was like, I might just like film like what a day is like as in doing rehab with a calf injury. Yeah. And then I was literally just started walking around because no one was doing this at the time and I didn't know really what to do with it and how it works well. So I just started filming like on a training track, just doing some like recovery drills and stuff and then a bit of gym and just talking shit to the boys. And like, mind you, like I'd say like 80% of the stuff I filmed got cut out because the club were like, you're not fucking chucking that on there, man. <laughs> you're not chucking that stuff on there. <laughs> Did you have to go to them? To yeah, every time. Every, yeah, okay. every vlog. Um, wow. I got better with it. Yeah. Um, but like, you don't want to give away any IP or structure stuff or who might, like, you might not realize, but you're filming in the club and then like someone's on the massage table getting like, I don't know, hammies checked or yeah. they might have like their injury names on the board. Yeah, of course. So, structure or something. Yeah, yeah, all that kind of shit. So I had to send it to the club. They ticked it off and then I just released it. But just the reason behind it was that, and then we we made the finals, and then we played against the Demons, and we lost in because it was it was in Adelaide. It must have mm. been COVID year. It was in Adelaide, and we played Melbourne Demons in the final, we lost by like thirty points or whatever it was, mm. or twenty points. And then that, that that just kept blowing up and blowing up. I was like, oh, I've got a product here. This is pretty cool. And then it's kept at that, and then it was doing well. So um, a lot, lo I actually love doing it because I wouldn't have any idea what AFL clubs are like, and everyone thinks the media portray us as robots like we don't give any like straight answers and stuff but i brought a lot mm. of personality that like no one ever knew zach bailey like what he was like and i was mm -hmm. he was always on the fucking gopro like yo 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 what's going on i'm love on it that's what i mean like that stuff and yeah i really enjoyed it and it just gave me something off field to do because I, don't know, I wasn't doing too much really i was just waiting until i retire to do like sports management and um a bit more content stuff but that was a good little pathway to do it mm. and do then ginnivan <laughs> fuck ginnivan bro <laughs> <laughs> he takes it to the next level, doesn't he? He like. Do you love to see it? Oh, I did because yeah. the old club started doing it, like mm -hmm. giving, getting the GoPro after yeah. the game. Yeah, and he did it, and then Kane Collins tore him a new arsehole. It was pretty, pretty funny the way he went after him. And I was like, everyone's like, oh, what Robbo does it, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, that motherfucker's been playing for like yeah. 13 years, like yeah. a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I understand what Cornsy was saying, but they ended up playing well that year anyway. And he, yeah, and then Guinea came he back and killed it. Five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was. Oh, that's great stuff. So. Even just like opening that door for players to be able to like feel comfortable doing it. Um, mm. As you said, Petrarca now is killing on TikTok with his, yeah. his cooking shit. So Chef track. Yeah. Was it stressful for you um, or, or did you feel judged at any time? No, nah, I didn't care. I'm at that stage of my career. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm doing this for the for good. And it's it's in, intriguing. And it, like I edit, like, you know, the process editing and like all that kind of stuff, like audio <laughs> syncing and putting music over and then getting copyright claims and stuff. If you use oh, else's man. tunes, like all that shit. So I was like doing that and I've been like, I was a skater when I was younger. So I was always editing stuff myself. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Mad dog skateboarder. That's Could legit. have been sponsored. <laughs> you kickflip? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like ollieing 10 stairs and stuff. Like I was, I wanted to be a stuntman and a skateboarder That's when I was sick. younger. But yeah, so I, I loved that process. Um, yeah, that opened up a lot of doors, but yeah, it's pretty cool. That's wicked. We'll, uh, we'll get to a quick line, um, you know, after the lines kind of finished, um, you were delisted and you posted something on Instagram saying you're devastated that Fags wouldn't allow me to announce this in person to the supporters of my teammates, but I guess that is footy. Yeah. Can you talk me through that Instagram post? Because it got, a, it, it was pretty loud and it got a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, I reckon it was like mixed emotions too, because I knew that I was like, me and Fags had convos like round four about like what next year looks like. And it was like, it was more, it was like chats around retirement and, mm -hmm. I just had 20 against um, Collingwood and I was like, wasn't bending over very well to pick up balls and I was slipping over and stuff. Like yeah. and we had a conversation around, um, uh, is it getting past you? How has the body feeling? And yeah. I had like this fucked 
disc that I didn't even know that was that was bad. So I had a bulging disc all year. But I thought I kept tearing my hammy in my calf, but it was all just referring I had nerve damage. It was yeah. referring down there. So I'd be, I wouldn't sprint because I'd be like, I'm about to tear something. Fuck. So that was like a really injury-plagued year. And I was still like managed to bust out a few games and do stuff. But we had chats all year. Then um, I got dropped a couple of times in the back end of the year, but still made sub. And like the Melbourne game, like Melbourne last game of the year, I, I came on and kicked a goal and played well in, in one yep. quarter. And then I played VFL the next day and mm. had like 40, <laughs> mid 40s, whatever it was, and then played Ridiculous. really well. Yeah. So, and then we had two suspensions in the Richmond game. So I think uh, Noah Answorth and Rainer got suspended. So mm-hmm. I was obviously going to play, but I knew like after the one week I'd be back out because yep. those guys are like, would, uh, come back. would come back in. And then I said to the club, like, okay, if, if I'm retiring, uh, let me speak to the the big dogs. So I had like um, the list list management in there, this, uh, the GM and the welfare manager and stuff to talk about it. And it's pretty full on when you're doing this. Like we just had like the, you know the boring chit chat, like oh hey, yeah. Robert, how's the family? Like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know you got talk. a big game next week, you got Richmond in final, like all, all that kind of small talk. I'm like oh fuck, let's just get to just it. I was like all right guys, so what's happening? Like are we gonna go around again or we're we just gonna like mutually part ways mm-hmm. type thing. And then we just spoke about like, um, no, we don't want you playing VFL again next year. We probably think it's the best time that like for your career and for you to be a guy in your own shield. Yeah. And I was like all for it. I was like, yeah, sweet as. Like I've had a great run. Um, if I do retire, then like, you know, some clubs might come to you, which they did, but it wasn't like anything set in stone. It was just yep. like more so hearsay just chat. chat. Like, oh, you can come down and train with us and all that kind of shit. So anyway, yeah. So we had that meeting and then I was like, yep, okay, we're done. So, and then... Without like putting anything on Brisbane because I absolutely love them. The, the, yeah. And then we're doing something for the farewell game. When's this come out? Next week, Tuesday. Yeah, so they'll probably be out by then. I cool. think we're doing a farewell game next week. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, against uh, Collingwood on the Thursday and like get to do a lap and all that kind of stuff, which is awesome. really, really awesome. But the message was it was like miscommunication through it, throughout with the coach and all that stuff. And it was recently the article came out about it um, with Fags and him talking about um, the timing of it and wanting to focus on finals, which I understand now. This is no chat during the process. And then I just, all, I, all my goal was, was to tell the players, like, you want to be able to tell them. Cause like I've gone to battle with them so many times. Yeah. Like I left it all out there with the whole club and every game, like played a game with like 20 staples in the face, like bled for that That's club. That's crazy. Like that kind of shit. Yeah. And I just want to be able to tell the players. I didn't get that opportunity um, for whatever reason. You might've been under the pump with the finals, haven't won a final for a while and all that jazz. And then I got dropped and I was like a little bit angry about this is the way it all went down. And mm. then, I just put that. That's that's the emotion I was feeling at the time when I put that Instagram post out, and I, I'll I'll stand by that. This is the way I felt. Devastated. I didn't get to do it to the players and stuff. They they ended up giving me a send off. The players like we have this um, annual beer pong day. Yeah. Um. After every season, and we the players who are retiring get gets get nude and get on the shoulders, and they just take them through <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So that was like the one of the best days of my life. Like, that's awesome. And it was teary eyed and stuff too. But yeah, no no animosity towards the club. Definitely moved on. Um. You know. Fags was awesome for me for my whole career. We, we bounced off each other and he helped me and, and we had a chat the other day on the phone for the first time since that incident. Awesome. And it was a really good chat. Like I put a lot to the side and he was like, come down to the club you know, if you want to do that kind of stuff and um, work with work with people or whatever it may be. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, no, it's fine. Like now I can f- I feel like something's just released and now I can just... You, know, you kind of look back on it and just say like... I, I wouldn't lucky. change it, yeah. I you wouldn't know. change a thing in my whole career. I'm, I'm that wrapped the way it went. Boy from Tassie, 247 games. Like, I was that close to 250. It would have been great yeah. to have that. But, um, yeah, 200 game play. You get two tickets to every game. That's any game, so awesome. any game, any day. So like Really? That, yeah, yeah it's cool. That's crazy. Any Anywhere in, the, in Australia, any game, you get oh, two right. tickets. So, um, I, I, I think, you know, Brisbane could have done it better, but that's all right. Like, hmm. The only thing I want to do is tell the players and the supporters and like thank Emma, my partner, because what she done for the club and stuff. So that was my um, my emotions and stuff during that time. And yeah, I wouldn't change it. It's the way it's a feeling. very emotional time. You got to remember. It's you crazy. Know. Like when when you have that conversation and you know it's the last game. Like I couldn't tell Brisbane were good. They flew my family up, like all my brothers and sisters, um, mum and dad, got us a box, and they're in the guard of honour when I ran out and I ran out with my kids and shit. And it yeah. was just like the best. The best worst feeling I reckon I've ever felt like the whole game, just knowing it's your last game, everything, like the emotions of it, the crowd was roaring, we ended up winning on the siren. Um, and then just the emotions like, oh fuck, I just try to take as much as I could in. So like wave to everybody and say mm. like, thank you so thank, much. Thank you yeah. for supporting It me. was like, 
uh, yeah, it's the weirdest feeling. Mm. And and even playing, like even commentating the other night, like I'm like, man, I could still be out there, like, yeah, for for a Gold Coast or someone, like on that wing, just mm. doing damage. But yeah, you you know when it's over. Because when I went to Darwin, I was like, fuck footy, fuck AFL. I'm gonna go out there and play for, and just like get away from everything. Yeah. Found love for the game again, having beers with the boys after the game and like that family culture and just a whole different vibe. And I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm definitely done. Yeah. There's no way I could do another preseason. Can't come oh, back man, again. Like, it's so it's draining oh, mentally and physically doing a new, uh, crazy, another preseason. Crazy, crazy. So People that, probably don't yeah. understand how I was speaking to an AFL player last night. I won't say who it is. Um, and I was asking him how he's going. He's on the back end of his career. And he's like, oh, it was just like the toughest um, off season. Just like, do I hang him up? Do I want to hang him up? Whatever. And then mm. once you get through preseason, you're in the fun stuff. Like, cause yeah. you don't, you barely train hard all year. Now you just got, you just want to keep that base. It's just recovery really, isn't it? Yes, through the year. That's what it is. Like you so play important. a Saturday, Sunday, you don't do anything anymore. Uh, Monday, come and do your recovery stuff. And then Tuesday, it's like a light sesh. Wednesday is day off. Thursday's your main light. training, but yeah, it's like, it's still it's light. It's light. It's like yeah. half an hour. Mm. Whereas like you're doing three hours work in the preseason. Jeez. And in heat as well. Yeah. What, uh, we're getting to towards the end. We've got a few um, questions around what legacy do you reckon that you left on the AFL competition? And do you reckon it's the legacy that you wanted to leave? Yeah, definitely. At the, at the beginning of your career. Yeah. If I, when I was like growing up, I was like, to paint a picture, I was like 15, 16 playing scenes in Tassie and you're getting bashed up every game. Like and I was playing well. I wanted to be in there well. for like when I was fifteen or sixteen or whatever. <laughs> That's crazy. So I was like really good as a junior, but like you're getting legitimately like punched in the face, bashed up, and I was like, There's no cameras back in those nah, days, well, bro. So no, fucked. it's local <laughs> footy. Like that'd lift you and under the packs, give it to you, <laughs> and that's when you build that thick skin and the mm. way you like. I was like, okay, Tazzy are known for like being tough and rough players, and I was like, I'm just going to adhere to that and just make that my own thing. And that's I wouldn't have got so many games otherwise. Like I yeah. would, I'm like talent wise. Like I can, I used to be able to mark well, um, not a bad size, six one, but nothing crazy. Not like a, like a brick shit house or anything like that. Yeah, I, I, I just love, a freaking I just love, yeah, I just, yeah, exactly. I just love to hit blokes and like just be physical and, and come up. Those are my highlight reels. That's what I love. Like, mm. So legacy wise, I just wanted to be known as a hard player who played the game. Um, like everyone says, oh, you played in the wrong era type thing. And that's, I love that chat. It's like, yeah. oh, I would have loved to play back in the day <laughs> and just like do all those things. But. Yeah, as I was talking about like recently on my Twitters and stuff about the bump and stuff, that's the game's changed so much. Now we get all these concussion conversations and you can get checks in your brain now instead of just waiting till you pass away to donate your brain to science like CTE and that. Mm-hmm. So the game's changed so much now that I, w- I wouldn't last long in it anyway, to be mm-hmm. honest. Like it's it's and more based around talent and fitness and, and stuff. Skill level yeah, and skill. Fitness. So like the tackling, you barely – barely tackle that much anymore and the bumps are gone and the physicalness has gone out of the game. But I, I, no, I love my time. I wouldn't change a thing. Do you hate to see that the bump is starting to go out of our game? And do you oh, think it's done that we now. No one's bumping anymore. Man. I know. Fuck and no. if they do, they get two or three weeks, don't they? You're not bumping anymore. It's done now. The bump, like from the weekend, they've just gone, nah, no one's bumping. Yeah. So if you because do... Because Baz kept playing. Yeah, you know, they all kept playing. Like... It's a, yeah, it, it's a tough one because like I've had about eight... Eight full concussions in games, like good enough hits where you black yep. out and stuff. And I don't know if I experience stuff now, but I'm very forgetful, which I never used to be. And okay. like I have a lot of mood swings, which is kind of linked into ADHD stuff as well, I think. So like Emma, Emma has like seen me change and stuff through the whole course of it. So wow. in the future, I'll be, hopefully I just want to be healthy enough to be like spend time with the kids, kids and all that, like be present for those things. But yeah, there's a thing you can do now for brain scans that I've booked in that you can get like checking in your frontal lobe and seeing if there's any damage done and wow. and you can put things in place now instead of waiting till you get to that point where evidently people take their own lives and depression and it's yeah. fucking really sad to see. So if you get on top of it early, you can kind of help with it. But yeah, the bump the bump's gone and and good it's good because being on the end of them, like I I I. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I was like, someone hits me good, tackles. Like, Callum Ward hit me one time. I was like, fuck yeah, Wardy, yeah let's, let's go. He tells that story really well. <laughs> and like, fuck, good hit. Before. Like, he like, got back up, like, winded and stuff. We're both, like, pretty sore from it. And um, I, just, I just loved it, that kind of – because you, you have so much built up during the week. Yeah. Get in the game, you're like, oh. fuck. <laughs> just, like, run through anything. So it's, it's good fun. But, yeah, I think it's changing for the best as well because, like, if you drop someone like that, who really cares? Mm. Like – Wow, you get a stoppage. Yeah. Whereas, like, you can just focus on next play or just tackle or so sometimes, go most yeah. dangerous. So, 
you used to be able to Im- impose yourself physically on the game and intimidate players, but too many cameras. There's four umpires now. Like you can't like. I just hate seeing little bitches in the game who like mm. try and get in your face, scruff you, and like, mate, you're not good. You're, like, you're actually not, not going to do, do anything. anything, and I'm not going to do anything either because I'm not getting weeks. So. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. So what's the point of this? Legit. So that's what I just hate seeing in the game, mm. especially when like little kids do it. And it's like, oh. man, I'd, you'd, you'd get mate, hit, I'd like, get hit. Mate, I fucking get it every week. I have to give you exactly. Hit, no, oh, you, fuck. Yeah. So everyone's the trying to make an for himself. People are like yeah. in the ribs in yeah. the back. I'm like, mate, oh, rib ticklers. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. I hate it. And then I have to give something back to them, but it's never. It's usually just like you can't you can't whack it back. You have no, to, you can't. Do the only way you can hurt them is by kicking a goal. Yeah, and get in their face and bash them on face. YouTube. Yeah, literally. On but TikTok. then they can, they can show their mates like, oh, look at my YouTube. Yeah, but, but you suck though. Mate, like it's not, not a good thing. You should be embarrassed you're by that. Literally, and being embarrassed. You bro, should be embarrassed for millions of people. I oh, know. <laughs> um, Robo, what is next for you after footy? Prime train. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me, Barry. Talk to me. Um, Sports, so I really want to do sports management, like look after players, like not, not the contract side of things because I want players to be able to put that money aside and do their houses and whatnot with that. Um, and the crazy thing was like I made like more money off field than on field last yeah. two years. So that's what I can find a real... Players don't know that. They don't use it. They don't use yeah. it for their, uh, their image or whatever to their advantage and brands out there are frothing for that stuff. They love spending so, money. So more so marketing for that. But yeah, just keep doing these vlog stuff, um, keep doing content. Um and obviously, the, the, my dream job is morning radio, FM morning radio. I like doing sports stuff. Did commentary the other night, and that was fun, but pretty serious. So if I can make that a um, bit more jovial and have fun with that, but that's probably experience coming along with it. But that's what Robbo will be doing. Can't wait to see you doing it, mate. I'm very, very excited. We're going to jump into Q&As, but before we do that, guys, I just want to drop a quick line and say, make sure that you check out Manscaped. Have you ever used Manscaped? Oh, they dogged me a couple of times. It dogged you? Yeah. I gave, <sighs> I gave them, uh, they hit me up a few times. And, and you, you get like the American ones and the European manscape come to you. <laughs> so I don't know who you, who's hit you up, but they said yes and they didn't send any money. So, <laughs> so yes, I have used Manscaped. Manscaped have, <laughs> even though... <laughs> That's the only time like, they've been bad. Even, really. They are, they have the greatest products. Make sure you go check out the new Lawn Mower 4.0. I actually yeah. used it yesterday, maybe to TMI, but on the, on it's, on uh, the pu- pubic. Oh, mate, on the pubic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I use it too. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely Shaved. elite. Shave everything. Yeah. I like to shave my legs before the game as well. Yeah, so same. I use it on a Friday. Same. Usually just get everything clean, cleared. No Makes nicks. it aerodynamic when you fight. Oh, mate, yeah. super aerodynamic. When I'm running, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel free. The tan looks better too when you're oh, shaving. Really, so. so good. So, so are you wondering why Prime Train picks up every weekend <laughs> besides his girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a manscaped. It's definitely manscaped. So they are the secret to picking up and making sure that you have smooth down under. And also, <laughs> please go and check out Whoop as well because the Whoop bands. Uh, have you? Have you nah, that's not the thing you wear on your wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, mate, they're elite. So basically, the Whoop band it will track your daily strain. Your reco- it will give you your recovery percentage yeah. so you know how much um, you can work out pretty much that day or, or the level of strain that you can exert. Um, it'll also have a sleep, sleep kind of app. Oh, the sleep app's yeah. elite. Tells so you when I to go to bed. It. I would have used it back in the day oh. like, as an athlete. But If you're an athlete, you yeah. need it. If, if you're, you're an everyday athlete, be. you need it. If you're a professional athlete, you need it. It's yeah. uh, it's one of the sleep greatest things. Sleep is huge for you. Oh, and I, I can't sleep. Massive. So, yeah. It's massive. And um, I was actually just listening to a sleep podcast today. And it's uh, it's probably the greatest thing you can have is to track your sleep because a lot of the time you think you're sleeping eight hours. Yeah, yeah. You're actually only sleeping like seven hours yeah. and you're like, shit. And then none of it's deep sleep. So that'll tell you your light sleep, your deep sleep, um, your REM, shout all that type of stuff. So shout out to Whoop, whoop for that. Whoop. Q&A, let's get into these. Get into uh, no longer than than 30 second answers. <coughs> That's pretty long answers. Well, it depends. Say, say that word again. 30 second answers. Answer. Answer. What, what do you what, say? What, answer. 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 What do you say? Derby or Derby. Uh, WA, yes, yeah. Derby for WA, Derby, isn't it? yeah, but it's Derby Day, but it's Derby Day here. It's weird. It well, because be when I'm here, I say palm, I say palma, but I've always say, said say pool, pool. That's pretty normal. Like at Queensland, I say like peel, 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 skill, yeah. and kill. Yeah, 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 yeah. What school would you go to? What the school. fuck? And what school? You school. Idiot. My parents taught me how to speak. I think I that's know. pretty they good. That's, that's rare. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> Some people don't have parents, you know. Like. <laughs> No. Shout out. Shout, Shout out, out to them. I actually Robo. met your parents. They're fucking legends. They're actually all right, yeah, eh? Dad has a crack. Yeah, he's a... Yeah, Mum's not bad. He's a good bloke when he's asleep. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> the best win... <laughs> Robo, what is the best win that you've ever played in your career? Uh, Playing-wise, 
would probably be my debut. That was a crazy mm. win. Like it's been a lot more along the way, but that was most memorable. And just playing in a game was the Richmond final last year. Yeah. Because that was a, that was a massive one. Sold out Gabba. Um, we weren't meant to win. We haven't won finals in ages. Like Richmond always beat us, and beating them in the first final was like bang. It was crazy, Fucking crazy man, feeling. You knew. Yeah. You had a good side that year. Yeah. Which AFL player talks the most shit out on the ground? I know you're probably going to say yourself, so apart from yourself. Nah. <laughs> um, Stevie Johnson was pretty out there. Yeah, really? We had some good battles, but he's kind of, um, how do you explain it? He's it, He just talked a lot. But he, didn't, he wasn't anything like It wasn't really offensive. No, he was like, you can't talk about it. Talk slower. Like that kind of <laughs> stuff. And I was like, oh, that's all right. But Ben Hudson, our ruck coach at the Lions, he, he was the, he was, he like did research. Oh, really? There's one time I went to fucking um, a movie premiere with a girl when I first got up here from Tassie. Um, I went and saw like Toy Story or whatever. And I got like a photo next to the cutouts. And got a photo like that. Like, uh, who cares? Yeah. When we played him that weekend, man, he was playing the Bulldogs, I think. He played against him. He's like, oh, I'll get another photo with a Toy Story cutouts from him. I was like, <laughs> how the fuck do you know that? Like, there's no one there. <laughs> so I hated him the most. We always used to like scruff and punch each other really? pretty hard. And then when I met him in the Lions, I was like, he's the best bloke ever. He's so How funny, funny is bro. that when you meet people off the field? They're I hated such him. Good I hated Dan Merritt. Like, really, really hated them, bro. And met them both and they're like friends for life. The big rangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. We're just butt fire heads. Yeah, those guys. Oh, they're always fiery. Yeah. How do you, you know, your your kind of hard attack on the ball, how do you mentally prepare yourself for a game from Declan? Um, I used to watch Biff Bump and Brawlers before the game. Loved it, like, all the time that on is YouTube. so funny. And without, like, looking like a dickhead, like, I used to watch my, some of my highlights too. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I can do that. Like, mm. if you watch stuff that you know you can, like, if you question yourself having a bad few games, like, watch shit that you've done before. So, you're mm. like, I can actually do that. Um, but, yeah, Biff, but Biff, Bumps and Brawlers before the game, loved that stuff. And then just the heavy metal on the way to the game. And then really heavy I always metal. thought to myself, if you go half ass, you're going to get injured. So, I, I really got injured. So, I just oh, always yeah. went straight to the ball. Did that uh, preparation like corn, change? Like, not like, Rage Against Machine. Like, yeah, I was like, really? You can't talk to me game day. Like my oh. kids, Emma, like don't come near me. Like for real. Like I won't talk to you. Anything you say to me, I'll just get angry at. Like Shit. they know that though. So that was like a good, so I've been with her for 12 years. So yeah, that's. She'll figure it out. She she knows now for sure. Did that change from when you were age 18 to 33 or nah, has that bro. always been the same? No, nah, no, nah, did not change. Crazy. I was like just angry all day. Far out. Uh, Charlotte asks, what was the biggest struggle for you in your footy career? Um, professionalism, yeah, like hundred percent. Got drafted, didn't know a thing. We had to do like um, urine tests, like every main session to check our hydration levels. Crazy, weighing in before every session. Um, diet. I used to eat steaks before a game, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Like had no idea. <laughs> yeah, wow, no idea. But now you got prime training to like talk people through it. Like, See, now you're fast tracking your development. <laughs> back then we had no YouTube, no nothing, no mm. one talking about that stuff. The availability for information now, these days yeah, is so if you're, much If you're not higher. over it now, then you just shouldn't play mm. AFL. It's, like, a you won't thing. Play it. it's the greatest thing about social media yeah. and what we have. But yeah, professionalism. The final question that I want to ask you, Rob Vlog Shark Eyes, <laughs> no neck. <laughs> <laughs> is, and this is the final question that I ask everyone on every single podcast, can you please give me three successful habits that you have employed throughout your whole life that have led you to being the success, successful person that Sexful. you successful <laughs> person that you are in your career, please. Three habits that you've um, employed. Three habits is I. It's kind of hard because I know what I need to do. It's journaling for me is a massive thing. So that's awesome. a habit that I love journaling. So because I got such a crazy brain and everything's going on so much, if I can't put those thoughts out, I've just I'll start one thing and then I'll just go like leave that and forget about it and go start another thing. Like, mm. so I have to journal, like I'm very strict schedule with what I do, but at the same time I'm lenient with like moving shit around or whatever, but journaling is massive for me. Wow. Um, diet whilst playing, like I was pretty good with diet and having a plan for like what my week looks like. Other ones is honestly, um, being honest and genuine. Like I, you see through so much bullshit, like you can tell blokes who aren't genuine with yeah. the, like the way they present themselves. Mm -hmm. Like I've never changed who I was. Um, and that's something that I'm always proud of, like just being myself. Like if you don't like me, it's like not like that, but if you don't like me, then that's fine. Mm. But I don't have to hang out with you. I don't give a shit. But I'll just I'll tell you what I think. So that's what I've always done my whole career and always done my whole life. And I had to tinker with a few things, obviously, because I was getting <laughs> too much trouble. But <laughs> just being genuine, honest to yourself. 
Mate. Oh, and one more thing, sorry, is being a family man, like, yeah. love my kids. I wouldn't be playing footy without my, like, if I didn't have kids. That's and amazing. Emma, obviously. Shout out to Emma. You're That's watching this. That's absolutely amazing. You just saved yourself there. I did fucking know. <laughs> from a shouting match. What's going on, bye? <laughs> for a shouting match. Where can we find you, mate, uh, if we're looking for you? Well, I'm currently staying at the Voco Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and driving a what? Toyota Corolla. I'm walking. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a oh, blue, baby car. blue. Don't Corolla. bring up that car, bro. Where, where can we find you? On everything, man. Just yeah. Mitch Robinson, you'll see it on top of everyone's list. Very good. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you into the Prime Potty. You're an absolute legend. Having you speak so openly and candidly about everything has just been an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Prime Train, <laughs> the supplements to get your rig looking like that. Thanks, man. Appreciate having you, me man. on. I'll talk to you. Love you. See you, bro. <laughs>